It's long been rumoured that dear leader Kim Jong-un is secretly an Apple fanboy, having been pictured with Macs on numerous occasions. Could this then be why Red Star OS, North Korea's official operating system, is a complete ripoff of Mac OS? Well, let's take a look at this infamous operating system right after this. Maltronics.com is where you can find the latest of hacker hardware, from Wi-Fi deauthors to Malduino keystroke injectors, Wi-Fi keyloggers, and USB protectors. It is run by myself, so do give it two minutes of your time. You're guaranteed to like our tech. Maltronics.com. Link is in the description. So this is the website we're looking for, opening up North Korea. Com. They have a lot of cool stuff, documentaries, videos, books from North Korea, that kind of thing. But what we're after is the download section, which has our Red Star OS version 3 desktop retail edition. Funny they call it that. I didn't think they even had shops in North Korea, what it being communist and all. But it's, that's what we're after, the retail edition. They have two editions here. There's the uh, consumer desktop edition and then there's the server edition. Funnily enough, the server edition requires a serial number um, to be able to use it. Um, I, I imagine those are allocated by the state to various server houses, I guess. I don't know. It's, it seems a bit ridiculous to require a ser serial number. This is Linux we're talking about after all. Because Red Star OS is based on Linux. It's its own Linux distribution. Um, ironic being Linux being for open software, open source and freedom and North Korea just have to make the most locked down version of Linux you can possibly imagine. Let's find where it is. So this is the one we're after. I kind of just clicked that for demonstration purposes as I already have it downloaded. So let's of course open it up in VMware. So you want a new virtual machine, um, our ISO. Okay, and it is Linux and it's based on Fedora. So we'll just uh, keep that selected here. I'm going to allocate it four gigs of RAM. So whilst this is loading up here, as far as I know, this is the only state sanctioned OS for consumers. I know China and Russia have tried to make their own, but I, I don't think they succeeded. Oh, here we go. Right. Um, I, my North Korean, my Korean rather, isn't really that great. So I'm just going to just gonna kind of wing it here. Oh, we got an English. Um, I should have mentioned that I've modified the, um, the ISO to change the installation language from Korean to English, just so um, I don't accidentally screw something up and we have um, and that we end up with something that actually works. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. I, I, th I think you will already realize that this is, is slightly uncanny. The interface is very Macintosh-like. It, it reminds me of 2011 Mac. But um, yeah, let's create our account. I'm lazy, so I'm just going to put everything as admin. Even the password hint. Very unadvisable. North Korea have their own internet. You might have heard they don't actually have access to the internet. So here they'd put in um, their internet details, I would imagine, but we'll leave that for now. Closest city. It's, it's funny they allow you to select whereabouts you are in the world. Okay, so the defaults are Japan. Well, the default is Korea, of course, but there's Japan and Russia. Um, I'm going to select London, England. This is probably one of the most interesting date and time prompts I've ever seen. Um, you might be a bit confused by that, but today's date, this is um, accurate. However, you'll see down here, it says 108.4. And that's because in North Korea, they use their own calendar system. They don't use the Gregorian calendar that we use. Um, where the year is 2019, they use a calendar system called Juche. I think that's right, J-U-C-H-E. And year zero is the year that Kim Il-sun was born. And since he was born 108, 108 years ago, the year in North Korea is 108. So um, they have that there. Uh, so it's April 108 in North Korea. Very mad. We even have the spinning beach ball of death. How cool. How cool is that? They really went to great lengths here to copy Mac OS as closely as possible. While this is down, while this is installing, the previous version of um, Red Star OS was actually based on Windows XP. Somehow a fanboy must have taken control of their computer systems and just switched everything over to Mac because that's what it's based on now. Right, we might be here a while. Three minutes. 
This version, version 3.0 of Red Star OS, was actually smuggled out of North Korea by a Russian student. That student must have had some balls, but I believe the reason for North Korea creating their own operating system was that they're just so damn scared that um, some Windows operating system or Macintosh or, or, or something might have some kind of backdoor put in by the US government, which, to be fair, is kind of understandable on their part, given if, if you look at the Vault 7 leaks, those were pretty insane. Oh, and by the way, this isn't a hacking OS. Um, some of you might think we're going to get into this and find a ton of penetration testing uh, tools. We're not. This is meant for just normal North Korean people with like, you know, normal everyday things on it. There's no, there's no penetration testing tools at all. However, there are some very interesting um, security implementations they have on this, which we'll look at a bit later, but they are, they are really quite scary from the whole privacy perspective. I'm really not liking this, this green color everywhere. It's uh, it resembles vomit and it makes me sick whilst I drink my coffee. Why isn't it red? Why do, why, why do they have to go with green and not red? Something's just boggle the mind. Oh, okay, it did it itself. And here we are. Uh, yes, this is very Macy, <laughs> very 2011 Mac. So the password that's set is admin. Okay, and we're in lovely green puke color as expected. But we've got a dock here um, with various, everything's in, in Korean, by the way. We I'll, I'll show you a way to change that in, in a few minutes. But for now, let's just try and muddle, muddle through things. Uh, we have, I believe this is the Finder. Very familiar. They've even changed the Apple logo in the top left to a, a red star. Um, we've, got a, we've got a red flag over here. Great. <laughs> I, I doubt Apple has any chance of suing these guys, but I'm sure it's something Apple would, would try. Right, so let's have a look at about this machine, which I believe this one is. Um, you see Red Star 3.0, it's, it's detected my internals fine. And that actually shows that we're running three gigs of RAM instead of the four that we set earlier. And that's because this is a 32-bit operating system. Unfortunately, so the max 32-bit operating systems can see is, I think it's like 3 or 3.5 uh, gigs or something like that. So that's that's kind of disappointing. But I imagine all the computers in North Korea are pretty ancient anyway, so it probably doesn't make much of a difference. So let's try and get into the uh, some kind of settings here. So we can... Oh, okay. This is, I believe, their version of system preferences. <laughs> um, what do we have? Okay, we can let's change that resolution. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so let's have a look at the desktop backgrounds there. They've at least gone so far as to not copy Apple's backgrounds. But then again, those Apple Apple's backgrounds are, are they have a lot of US American landscapes in them. I, I don't think the North would be all that keen on that. Um, is this flowing green fields? Um, Majestic mountains, that's cool. Very high resolution backgrounds, Br brilliant, brilliant stuff. I'm, I'm guessing these are pictures taken in North Korea. Oh, no, actually, okay, I, I kind of take that back. That doesn't look like North Korea. If we go down here. Uh, okay, now, th now this is what I'm after. Um, <laughs> are these what North Korea is hoping to defend themselves from? Uh, from American nukes, snowy photoshopped image. I, I don't think they're gonna have much luck with that. What else have we got? This looks cool. I guess. I, I don't know what's going on here. Are these rice fields? I don't know. A sunset. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's just leave it at the um the North Korean defenses. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> It's very magnificent. So before we go any further, I do want to try and change the language on this um, somehow because this this North Korean is really going to pull me back here. Um, by default on Red Star OS, there is no root account. You have to do some funny business to get root because it's, it's just not here by default. Uh, that, that doesn't really surprise me. 
So there is this file you can download online, this red star root to RPM. Uh, this file gives you root essentially. I'll, I'll, I'll link it below. It doesn't come in the ISO by default. So I've edited the ISO and put this in, but this will give us our root. I believe we have roots, <laughs> I think. Okay, let's have a look. Let's try and get the terminal up. Can we find terminal, please? Terminal, where are you at? There we are, terminal. Okay, do we have roots? Yay, we have roots, cool. And now we're gonna try and change the language to English. So I'm typing out a few commands here and this will just um, replace the Korean language preference with an English US language preference. So, right, now I believe we need to restart and hopefully if all's gone well, oh, there we are. Okay, so I need to log out and log back in. So now everything is in English, thank God. So it would seem that they've also kind of copied Apple in that how, in that Apple has like the, um, the letter I before a lot of things. Uh, they've put the letter K instead. So we have the K finder. This is the web browser, by the way. Uh, the K finder, the K cal. Um, is that where it ends? Oh, they should have done it with everything. That would have been way more fun. So now that's changed. Let's have a look at some of these applications. Let's see if we can do anything at all with them. So this is the web browser. They call it the Nanara browser 3.5. Okay, so it would seem only... Uh, OS stuff is in English. Everything, all app, all, all application-based stuff is still in Korean. That's not great. Uh, so as you can see, it doesn't work. It's automatically set to go to this IP address here, which um, I, I believe in North Korea, they don't use domain names. They don't use DNS. They just use IP addresses. So if you want to go to a website, you have to put in this IP address. But for the most part, you can't access the wider internet whatsoever, you have to, well, I guess remember these IP addresses. And this is, I would imagine, the uh, the Google of North Korea or something like that by default. Um, we will fix the internet in a bit. We'll get the internet working. But for now, let's just take a look at some of the other, some of the other things we got here. So let's take a look at those applications. Oh, we have a font book. What fonts do they use in North Korea? I wonder if they have Comic Sans in North Korea. Uh, no Comic Sans? No. No Comic Sans. You could say that North Korea is Sans Comic Sans. <laughs> That's just not funny. What's this? Unbang. Oh. This is like a... This is for creating music? That's cool. This is the, the garage... North Korea's garage band. Does it work? Can we make a song? Um, I, I do know my sound settings are correct. I tested those earlier. But, oh. You know, I'm not going to waste my time on this. I have no idea what I'm doing. And even if I did, I wouldn't be able to come up with anything cool. What else have we got here? Sogwang Office. So I do believe this is, I think it's an adaptation of Open Office. Um, just the generic thing, really. It's just, just Word. <laughs> just, just a bit boring. Types English, though. I would have thought the default keyboard layout would have been Korean or something, but hey, that I, I, you know, it makes my life easier. What's this? I was hoping for some kind of games. I was hoping that <laughs> the OS would come pre-installed with some kind of game that we could that we could play, but unfortunately not. Oh, what's this? This looks like a game. No, this is some kind of. Uh, I do believe this is a command line application. Something to do with uh, an encryption utility, I think. But we won't look at that right now. So let's look at the browser, because there are some really cool things. Uh, so let's look at clearing the IP tables rules, because by default, this isn't going to work with, if we go to google.com here, it's just not going to load, because it just doesn't recognize, it just doesn't recognize that address, because this is, it's in North, it's still in North Korean mode. So we need to play with a few things and we just clear the IP tables rules. I do believe we should be able to get access to the internet. Okay, I think we need to restart. 
and voila, we have google.com. Isn't this amazing? So uh, let's have a look at what uh, browser we're actually using here. Cause I, I do believe this is uh, like uh, a reskinned version of Firefox. So if we say, what browser, um, ah, God damn it. Okay. Um, so this is something else to note. Um, because this is a very old OS and it was made for the North Korean market, if you could say that, it doesn't actually come installed with the uh, SSL certificates that we need in order to use HTTPS. So any site, pretty much any site, I think that has HTTPS, um, it, it's just not going to work because it doesn't have the certificates installed. Can we, no, okay, we have to use HTTPS on that site. I do believe though, this is a, okay, this is a non-HTTPS site. The only reason why it works. Uh, but we are using Mozilla 5 on Fedora. That's descriptive, I, I guess. That's useful to know. So I, I would say if, if you're interested in downloading this OS, um, run it in a, a, run it in a virtual machine, uh, use VMware VirtualBox, whatever it is. Don't use it as a main OS, even ironically, because you have no idea what kind of um, kind of malware, what kind of spyware is installed on this thing. Another big problem that the North Koreans have in general is people sharing media, so Western media, films, uh, music via USB sticks or micro SD cards. They don't want you sharing movies from capitalist pigs in the West, so. They do have a, a few clever tricks here to try and track that kind of activity. So what Red Star OS actually does by default is it'll tag any um, any removable media drive that you connect to this thing. So if I were to plug in a USB stick um, with a few files on it, it'll actually add some metadata into that file, allowing officials to try and figure out where that file has uh, come from or whose computer it has been used on. So we can actually demonstrate that if I find my, if I plug in a USB stick here. So I've got this file, which is uh, actually my desktop background on this computer. Uh, just, you know, gates just looking awkwardly through a door. That's cool. Um, so I'm just gonna rename this so we can, uh, let's just rename it NK. And I've kept the original here on my desktop. So if we plug this USB stick into the virtual machine here, it's only got that one picture on it. So let's plug that in. You will notice it pops up here, pretty innocent looking. You have a look and it's a picture of a capitalist pig. We, we can't be having that now, can we? So. As far as the user's concerns, nothing has happened. You've just looked at an image and that's it. But actually, if you were to then unplug this USB from this and connect it back to our actual computer here. So this is back on the computer and I'll get the original and kind of put it side by side. Uh, you'll notice it's still the same file size. Everything looks pretty vanilla. Nothing looks like it's changed. I mean, other than the date modified <laughs> there. So you can see something has happened. This this innocent looking photo has been modified. However, if we open up a command prompt here and get a hash of those two files, you'll actually notice the hash is ever so slightly different. How do you do this on Windows? I don't use Windows all that often. Sorry, I don't Windows all that often. So we're in <laughs> the, the USB stick here. And, oh, God damn it, we're not on Linux. Okay. Um, so we've got those two files. You actually notice the file size is slightly different. So if we take a hash, you see the hash is, well, the SHA-1 of that file is that. Whereas if we look at the North Korean one, it's different. So there has been some modifications to the file we've plugged into Red Star OS there. Um, so what it does, I believe, is it takes the 
it, it takes some of the serial numbers of um, the computer, so some of the hardware serial numbers, and it just imposes that onto files such that um, the North Koreans can figure out who is distributing these illegal files, figure out where they came from, and imprison them and their whole family, or, or something to that extent, I'm sure. Which is why you should never use it as an actual operating system. Don't don't use it as a daily driver, even even ironically, even if you want to brag to your friends that you're using a North Korean OS, just just don't do it. Uh, so that's a TLDR of this video, don't use Red Star OS. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more hacking videos. Have a good one.